there are two amazing holidays, uh, two Eids, which I was kind of, you know, I think one's Eid al Fitr and one's Eid al Adha. Um, but what would it be like um, with your families during one of the Eids? Um, what might you eat together or what might you do? So could you each speak about um, what uh, matters during one of these holidays? Oh, oh, yeah, forgot. <laughs> um, my Eid tradition, I remember, I don't remember much from Afghanistan, but I remember my mother would try to make it as much as possible because she had missed home so much. She would, for the last three days before Eid was coming, she would sing to herself Eid songs in both Pashto and Farsi. She would be singing these songs. So now I remember myself, she taught me how to drum. I think it was her way of keeping the traditions and whenever she would be sad about, about my, my siblings that were left back home, she would make poems and those poems would turn into songs. And that's how the way we started. If we were making sweets, desserts, whatever we were making to prepare for the end of Ramadan, we would do it through songs. And the other most exciting part was she loved to sew. And I remember go, my brother taking us across the border to Vancouver, um, Canada, and she would find the material that she would need. And we would choose, it was, it was my niece and myself that was here, um, we would choose our materials. And she would say, you know what? You guys will not know what I'm making for you. Whatever I make, that's what you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the smell of henna. Henna marks the happiness. And I would ask her, could we do design? She said, well, you'll have to go to sleep. When you wake up, you'll have a design on your hand. <laughs> well, her form of design was just like our dresses. She would slap the henna on your hand. And you woke up. As I would wake up in the morning, whatever it was, there was henna all <laughs> over my head. So the henna is a tradition that till this day, I would wake up with the excitement of what's on my hand and what kind of outfit is ready for me in the morning. We, I grew up in a home with uh, four other siblings, big family, I'm the oldest. Uh, on a day, I mean, a week before, maybe more than that even, uh, it is a word that every day is and every night's conversation in our home, where, uh, I, the way that I grew up. Uh, so. Um, my mother would start um, making decisions, just like you. Uh, so what we are gonna wear, and she would sew or um, knit, if it's in winter, for us. Uh, whichever way is affordable, five kids. She's making all that calculations. So some eats, uh, I may have only shoe, new, mm -hmm. nothing else, or repeat shoe, or fixed, blouse from my mother's early, uh, early years. Mm. Uh, so she would um, wash them if they are not new, iron them, uh, and then put uh, next to our bed a day before. Mm. So all five kids, they have their clothing set next to us, and shoes are right, right next to them. Uh, my father would go to um, the, the prayer in the morning. We won't go. We are still sleeping, getting ready to uh, greet my father. Mm. So when he comes from a prayer, we all lined up. We look through the window. Oh, there he comes. Mm -hmm. So break, we hop, hop mom, make the breakfast table. Then we line up at the door one by one. And he would just walk in and kiss each one of us from youngest to the oldest. Okay. And then he would give us a you know, little money, whatever he has in his pocket. Aww. And then we would sit next to him. Another tradition was, a uh, youngest of the family would sit, sit next to him mm. at, the break, at the dinner table and breakfast table. And uh, then we would rush to clean up the table. Everyone helps, so we clean up the table. Then, um, um, then our neighbors come to which eat Mubarak, our relatives come. So those are the loveliest times that I still remember. Uh, here we just, um, uh, we have a community. I don't have any family member in North America. Mm -hmm. So we would go to the mosque, we would prepare again days before and uh, to dress up as nice as possible, go to the mosque and just hug people and they wish Eid Mubarak. Uh, I look forward to it. Yes. 
and eight back home, I was very young. I don't remember that much, but I remember one thing. Since my parents had eight daughters, actually seven, and they adopted one, so that was eight of us. Mm-hmm. My mom, like, um, when Ramadan is in like 10 days, she would go to a local, what do they call those people who make the dresses? Okay. Yes, definitely, sorry. <laughs> Brain is frozen. <laughs> Taylor, and she would just make us dresses. All of us, the same color, the same look, the same design. <laughs> oh yeah, because, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because then she knew it would, we would fight. Yeah. If somebody's wearing red and that one is wearing blue, oh my God, why did you do that? So she would just go ahead and everybody the same. The same shoes, the same hair design, and that was it. So here is totally different. Um, so everybody has grown. Some of us left the house and got married and have children. So what we do is that in the morning when we wake up, everybody, we, uh, first of all, about five, six days ago, the family would have a family meeting of what to cook. And trust me, it's a feast. Yes. Uh, my aunt will come, my mom, my other auntie, my cousins. will. The, the women would take a, this kind of a meeting. And then they will decide who is going to cook and who is going to cook what on that day. So in the morning when we wake up, we'll dress the kids up. Thank God my kids, they don't have to go through what I went through. Uh, they have their choices of, of clothing. And then we have our gifts. So we'll take the gift with us before we go to the mosque and drop it off at grandma's house. Or we'll take it the gift with us. We wrap gift days before for everybody in the family. And then we'll end up at grandpa and grandma's home. Everybody, after they come back from the mosque, will start eating sweets. So this is how it goes. It's like a five-course food. We'll eat the sweets. It's like a buffet of spread of sweets. And that was baked five days ago. Like every day it was baked. Then we'll have a breakfast, it's another buffet. Then we'll have a lunch and dinner, it's another buffet. Then it's another dinner, then it's another. So after, after eat, you are in a food coma. <laughs> making up for the calories you lost a whole month ago. Exactly. I, I know. Baby. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, everything is basically the same. <laughs> um, my, the only difference that I noticed was um, I have a younger sister. She and I are 11 years apart. So watching her grow up, I noticed what a big influence Christmas had in her life and how much she admired Christmas and the whole idea of like the magicalness and all the movies and all the cutesy stuff that comes with Christmas. And I wanted to replicate that when it came to Eid, so I went out of my way and tried to decorate our home to create sort of that same vibe. Um, we don't have a Eid tree because <laughs> that's <it>. weird. <laughs> Some people do. But yes, to FYI. each your own. <laughs> to eat your Some own. Some people have Christmas yeah. trees. Let's be real. Like, For some Eid? Muslims have, no, oh. even, even during Christmas. Oh, I'm aware. Have, yeah. <laughs> but know. we just decided to wrap presents and keep it in front of the fireplace because <laughs> in Texas, you don't use that. It's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all decor. <laughs> That's funny. So, so we would keep presents and we wake up in the morning. Yep, same. Like, it, it's um, Islamically, well, the Prophet peace be upon him, said that for Eid, you have to get up, you have to shower, be clean. If you don't have new clothes, wear washed clean clothes, and then go out and pray um, the the Eid prayer with your friends and family and whatever. So my aunt from Pakistan would send us new clothes every Eid, Mm -hmm. and she felt it personally offensive if we wore something more than once. So if we weren't wearing something new, she was offended. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) we'd be wearing new things, and then like the most momentous Eid that I remember is like um, our outfits were not simple. If you've ever seen South Asian outfits, yeah. they are blinged out <laughs> like <laughs> glitter and gems and all the sequins you could ever imagine in that like arts and crafts 
in one outfit. So I, I was every year and to this day still wearing the most magnificent outfits. And like, like you said, my mom couldn't be bothered with like cooking on Eid because she said, I'm celebrating too. I don't have time for this. So we would just kind of do like a potluck buffet brunch. And one year I was destined to do the bagel run. So I went in my full outfit to Einstein's to pick up bagels. And this little girl sees me walk in and she like her eyes widen and she goes to her dad. She's like, is that a princess? I've had the same question. And I was like, I yes, yes, yes. The, the bagel princess has arrived. <laughs>